CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. 32 p.m. on Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. First, I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Uh, Patrick Hanlon. Here. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. And uh, Ben Cahulli is traveling this evening. Um, he thought he would try to join in if he could. But I think he's on an airplane right now, so probably not a good chance. Um, officials here on behalf of the town, uh, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. Good to have you with us. Um, and I don't believe anyone else from the town is here. Um, and then appearing for docket 38115 Merrigan Street, is uh, David Tashman or Claudia Croce Tashman here? Good to have you with us. <clears throat> for docket 3814 200 Broadway, uh, is Kristen Germano here? Uh, Ricardo Rulo appearing for her. She should be on shortly as well. Perfect. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, good to have you with us. Uh, appearing for docket 3815 32 Princeton Road. We have Matthew Adams and Olivia Adams. I'm the contractor. This is Joe Dans. So good to have you with us. Great. And then appearing for docket 3818 Fountain Road, uh, Robert Johnson. And I believe he's being represented by Mr. Leone. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with the supplemental budget bill signed by Governor Healy on March 29, 2023, which extended temporary provisions pertaining to the open meeting law to March 31, 2025. The extension of these provisions allows public bodies to hold its meetings remotely by providing live, adequate alternative means of public access to the deliberations. This meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast by ACMI. Members of the public who are participating by Zoom and who wish to offer public comment should be aware that they will be asked to provide their full name and address so that a complete public record of the meeting can be taken in accordance with state law. All participants of this meeting are advised that people may be listening to the meeting without offering public comment, and those people are not required to identify themselves. Any votes that are taken this evening will be conducted by roll call vote. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda, and as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the, town, the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. This quick note on procedures. Um, at the end of the discussion of each individual hearing, the board will vote to either continue the public hearing to a specific date to continue receiving testimony on the matter, or the board will vote to close the public hearing, ending the receipt of new testimony. The board will then proceed to the next item on the agenda. Over the coming days, the board will prepare a draft decision based on the testimony received and the discussions that took place during the public hearing, and that discussion will be voted on at the next available meeting of the board. In practical terms, for those hearings before the board this evening, there will not be an official vote for or against your project this evening. That vote will take place at our next available meeting when we will have a draft decision to review and upon which our vote will rest. So with that, uh, continuing the administrative items, uh, item two, uh, the so I'm going to go ahead at this point um, uh, move the discussion of administrative items to the end of tonight's meeting because we do have four hearings. Uh, so we'll proceed directly to the public hearings. Um, and again, I, I thank everyone's patience. I know that uh, 
several of our cases this evening were postponed from the prior hearing. I appreciate the applicant's patience and uh, we'll try to move through as quickly as possible. We do have four items on our docket this evening. So um, we will start with item number three on our agenda. But before opening tonight's meeting for public hearings, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves and make their presentations to the board. I'll then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote to either continue or close the public hearing. All votes will be conducted by roll call vote. The final vote on any matter before the board will be taken at a subsequent meeting once the written decision has been drafted and provided to the board. The decision will then be filed with the town clerk starting the 20-day appeal period under state law. After that time, the applicant may proceed with their building permit. However, under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and recorded at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, um, item three on our agenda is docket number 3812, 15 Marigan Street. So if I could have the um, applicants please introduce themselves and tell us what they are proposing to do. Hi, I am Claudia and um, I purchased the home on 15 Marigan Street with my husband um, on, in October. And we live here where there are two children. Uh, it's We love the neighborhood. We love the neighbors, especially. Um, and we're glad to be in Arlington, finally. We were waiting for two years to get in. Uh, we managed to buy a small house. Um, and uh, we see the opportunity to, um, to uh, build a little entryway, a little mudroom, and a front porch. So uh, that's the idea, pretty simple. We thought it would be in, in, ingratiate the building um, and uh, the neighbors are excited uh, because we all intend to just watch our kids bike up and down while we're sitting on the front porch instead of on the steps and, uh, and we'll have somewhere to put some shoes and coats. It's pretty simple. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you. I am... Um... Go ahead and share the plans. Uh, so these are the revised plans. So there was an initial set of plans posted and they have been yeah. um, subsumed. There's a revised set of plans now. Um, yes. The, the proposed this is the porch portion and uh, it's the mudroom portion. Yep. Um, just showing you in relation to the house itself in relation to the property lines, uh, demonstration of op usable open space and landscape open space. Um, plans at the basement, just the footings. Mudroom, 49 square foot mudroom on the first floor. Um, and then the, we are not, not touching the second floor as part of this application. Um, and then here is the showing the addition. And then just we have dimension plans, demolition elevations. Um, Dimension and that's the proposed front elevation with a shingle roof. Yeah, just a quick section through. Okay. And this is being filed under section uh, 539A which um, allows for um, a porch and or a mudroom to be uh, that are larger than the, the the maximum size allowed directly into the bylaw. Um, a larger may be allowed by special permit. That's the what well, is for us today. Um, so that 
in the earlier set of plans that were submitted, the addition was offset from the side of the house by about four feet, and now it's slid over. Yeah. Um, I was just curious if you could sort of comment as to the the intent behind moving it over. Um, well, there was a gas meter there. Um, and so rather than squish everything, <clears throat> it's not a very big place. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't, it just was kind of, the reason it was a little bit more center is because there was the gas meter there. So we had the gas meters moved to the side. Ah. It's no longer in the front. And so it made sense to just make it a little prettier. Um, and then what uh, I also did was um, just kind of lift the the stairs where they are right now, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, it just made more sense to leave the stairs kind of in the middle of the house for instead of squish them a little to the right, like in the first drawing. Um, and uh, and that's it. That was the reasoning behind it. I thought it just looked a little bit more balanced this way. And mm -hmm. we were able to provide the space for it. Great, thank you. Um, go ahead and send the share. Ask the if there are questions from the board. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon. So we've on a number of other occasions uh, we had sort of second generation projections into minimum yards where people have started with porches and then sought to uh, to incorporate part of the front setback into uh, living space in the house. And I take it from your description of what your intentions are that those are not your current intention. You no. to keep this as a, a mudroom and, and porch together. So yeah, I don't I don't see it ever being something other than that, because I want, do want a, a little bit of a front yard. Uh, and uh, so if anything, you know, uh, it's as it's as far out as we would go want to go. And we really like the idea of a farmer's porch. Um, so we wouldn't um, have it be part of anything that is in, right now internal. So if if eventually the board were to approve this application and there was a condition creating a uh, delay for any further application for enclosing the porch, that would not be a problem for you because you didn't no. know intention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Other members of the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. DuPont? Could we take a look at both of the uh, plot plans, please? Sure. Because I think that in the plot plan, the as-built, it's essentially from the corner of the house uh, to I think the asphalt uh, walkway sidewalk I think it's 20 feet and I just wanted to make sure I understood what the dimensions are going to be with the proposed addition certainly focusing a little bit is that legible or a little go like maybe a little larger yeah so would it be 13 and a half feet from the proposed mudroom to and I just want to make sure that that's the actual um, measurement. I went and I saw it, and it's 20 feet is not that big a space to begin with. Right. But that that is an accurate drawing, I, I assume, because this is a, you know, a surveyor who's done this and signed off on it. So, so we have the 13 and a half uh, feet. And then the comment that the applicant just made, so the stairs are essentially... Are they going to be in the same place or are they being moved further toward the street? So they're right now they're they're in the same place in that they are going to stay in the center of the home. Yeah. But I I do have to elongate the top step because there's not um there's not enough room. There's only there's barely three feet up there. Uh-huh. Um, which is not really, it wouldn't today be really built that way. Um, so I, I want to, in order to make room for the porch, I need to elongate the top step. So it basically brings it um, to, right now, uh, the, with the existing one, it's about, I believe, I don't have it in front of me, but it's about three feet more in or something like It's It's whatever two steps worth is. We have to elongate it by one by one step and then add another step at the bottom so that to accommodate for the front porch. 
because it's a kind of a small space. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, so in essence, it's two steps forward toward the street. Uh, well, I'll just ask the applicant, is that essentially what you're saying? That's yeah. Sort of, okay. Okay. I just wanted to check the dimensions. Thanks. Sure. I do have my architect who's available on, uh, I can put her on, uh, I can call her if we need her. Um, okay. So she can speak more to the precisions than I can. Um, thank you, Mr. DuPont. Are there other questions from the board? Stop the share. Okay, so I will now be opening the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments will only be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address of the record, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. And the chair will do its best to show documents being discussed. So with that, are there any members of the public who wish to address uh, this application, which is docket number 3812 at 15 Merrigan Street? Uh, we have a hand up, Ms. Uh, Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Uh, just a quick question, and I think it was it's in the documents, and I was moving around them madly trying to find out. What is the uh, current expectations for a foundation for this new addition? It's um I I think they're just gonna it, it's in the yeah it's in the documents it's post and beam I believe I'm not, no yeah not the construction the the actual foundation upon which the uh, post and beam might be generated or based uh, yeah, this is zooming down to find that Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Gadali. I, I I have it up on my screen. There's oh, perfect. Sauna, there's sauna sauna tubes, Mr. Moore. Oh, okay. Oh, sauna tubes, not they're not um oh, adjusting the current foundation wall. They're just adding sauna tubes to, to support the porch and the mudroom. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. And Mr. Riccadelli. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are there other members of the public who wish to address this application? Seeing none, go ahead and close the public comment period. Uh, so the public comment period for this hearing is now closed and the board will discuss findings and either vote to close the hearing or recommend a continuance. Um, so what the board has before it is an application under section 539A of the zoning bylaw um, is a request for a porch and a mudroom that are within the existing front yard setback of the home. Um, so this home is does have an existing non-conforming front yard. Uh, the required minimum is 25 feet. It's currently 20.5 feet, uh, which is fairly consistent for this neighborhood and in generally for Arlington. Um, and this is a this is a seven foot deep addition. Um, so it would reduce that to 13.5 feet. Um, the mudroom itself is, excuse me, uh, just 59 square feet. Um, it's a fairly modest in size. And as, as was addressed through Mr. Moore's question, the this will be uh, set on sauna tubes and, and then be wood frame construction above grade. Um, the one question I had wanted, uh, so there was one feature of the earlier application that I really liked that I wanted to, um, to bring back. So one of the, 
ideas were behind the mudroom and the and the porch um where it is flush to the outside wall of the house it sort of loses its appearance as um something that's attached to the front of the house it sort of gets blended in on the side and mm -hmm. i had liked it before because it was really offset from the edge and it was very clear that this was an addition to the front of the house it was a nice clean um application and, and sort of is in keeping with the way the design guidelines are that these sort of uh, forward facing additions to homes should sort of be reduced in, in scale as they come forward. And so it did that nicely by stepping off the side. Um, it's now been shifted back over to the side. So it's flush with the side wall of the house. Um, and so I did just want to ask the applicant in order to sort of keep that initial appearance, if they would be willing to um, inset that sidewall by like a half a foot or a foot in order to really sort of re-emphasize that this is an addition on the front rather than extension of the house. If that's gonna, if that's what we have to do, I will do it. Um, mm -hmm. If I do that, um, uh, it does kind of mess up the entryway into the house. Um, I had wanted to put a little like closet in there and by doing that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, it's a very, it's a pretty small entryway to begin with, um, mm -hmm. you know, because you think three feet is already the door. Yeah. So um, I would literally have two feet in front of me if I So rather than take it out of the, like, would you, if you just took the mudroom and slid it over by six inches, so you take the six inches out of the open porch rather than out of the mudroom? It's more what I was thinking. Sure. That's fine. Okay. Makes the mudroom a little smaller. Um, well, I, I would keep the mudroom the exact same I'm size. Sorry, the porch a little porch. small. Um, the reason why, um, the other reason why is because I had wanted to make the entry into the house um, mm -hmm. as much to the right as possible to allow for a division um, into what is now the dining room uh, that we wanted to make into more of a, uh, sorry, the living room is not going to be the living room. It was going to be a, a dining room in the future um, mm -hmm. or maybe even a kitchen. And so um, we had wanted to kind of put the corridor as much to the right as possible yep. to allow for the code of three feet um, of corridor when you walk in and just make it more comfortable. But I'm not going to give up the mud room and the porch mm -hmm. for six inches or a foot. So yeah, whatever gets the job done for you guys is fine. Okay. So I also then, just personally think it just looks better, a little more, I don't know, craftsman, modern, if it's lined up. Th those are my two cents but <laughs> on a design standpoint. But, you know, sure. I just, I have this kind of cool vision for my house. And Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, then I, I would turn back to the board and, you know, is it, do you think this is a, a a reasonable request, or should we? Is it something that is not 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 something we should pursue? Mr. Chair, I guess I look first. Okay. Yes, Mr. Cadelli. <laughs> no, I I do agree with you. I think I think. Um, maybe to, to give the applicant a little bit more context on, you know, why the design standards, are, the residential design standards are that way is because, uh, because this neighborhood, like many of the neighborhoods in Arlington are developed with similar styles of houses that are repeated, you know, many times, like your neighbor's house is a similar style to yours, that by uh, accentuating the addition as an addition, like a uh, an added piece of the home, then it's retaining still the character uh, of the original home uh, in, in the background. So I agree with the um, the chair's comment. I think it would I think it would look very nice uh, to have that ex exposed corner uh, to still see the sort of original form of the home. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Fidelli. Other comments from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So it was interesting when I first looked at this, I went driving on um, Google Maps uh, up and down the street and I was 
I was thinking in terms of the harmony of the proposal with the uh, the other properties up and down the street. And I think that if you look at it, it was fairly common that they have these enclosed entryways that are like, I don't know, two to three feet forward, you know, from the house. They they seem rather small and I don't know what the width is, but, you know, it's not terribly wide. And so I saw that repeated over and over again. And I thought, oh, you know, I wonder if this is an issue for the harmony, you know, question. And then I turned the corner when I drove over there onto Michael Street, and I think that the lots are essentially the same in terms of size. And it's funny because there are at least like four houses in a row, I think, who've put in what I would think of as enclosed porches. I don't think there are additional rooms or you know living space in the strict sense. And I, I think even though that brought the building closer to the street, I think it they actually looked quite nice. So it assuaged my concern. I'm just saying that, you know, that it would be out of keeping with the rest of the neighborhood um, and that it would somehow look odd. So just a thought. All right. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, so just going off Mr. DuPont's comment, I was just kind of looking at that, that street on Google Maps myself real quick. and. Um, you, as you scroll down and you see those houses that he's referring to, they all do kind of set themselves off from that from the corner, kind of six inches or so. Mm -hmm. So I think it just helps um, for me to agree more with um, having the requirement to move that the addition piece a little bit away from the original corner of the house. Again, helping it be harmonious with the rest of the neighborhood and fit in with the residential design guidelines. Great, thank you. So with that, um, so under five, so five three nine A does not have any specific findings that are required. Um, it only has the the standard findings, which are in section three 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 of the zoning bylaw. Um, so those are that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, <clears throat> so the beneficial impacts of this, it creates a more useful entrance for the homeowner. Um, it creates an open public space that, that can be shared with the neighborhood while the uh, while the uh, owners are on their porch. Um, and th that is in keeping with uh, the idea of fostering a neighborhood and, and being a part of a community. So uh, the adverse effects um, certainly do not come near the beneficial impacts. Uh, the requested use is allowed allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Uh, so this is allowed under section 539A by special permit. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Uh, as said before, uh, really what this is creating is it's a, not only a space for the, uh, the owners to come in um, and get out of the weather before entering their, their home and having a place to put things away, but it also creates a space that's a part of the public realm out on their street and uh, provides for that connection and allows them to be a part of, of the neighborhood, um, which is a public good. The requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, this is still set for far back from uh, the edge of the, the street. Uh, it's still 13 and a half back from the, the back edge of the sidewalk. Um, and so it still provides um, ample viewing or at least comparable to today viewing from the driveway uh, out to the street and out to the sidewalk. Uh, will not overload any public system. Um, there are really no public systems involved except for the, the marginal additional uh, electricity for lighting. Um, the special regulation for the requested use, um, as I said, 539 does not have any special regulations for this. The requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, as was, was spoken to by several members of the board, um, this is really very nicely in keeping with the residential design guidelines um, and the, the existing pattern within the neighborhood and moving the, the addition uh, slightly off the corner uh, really sort of helps to accentuate that. Uh, the requested use will not be detrimental to the public health or welfare. Um, 
So this is just an extension of a residential use. Uh, so that's it's not detrimental to the public health. And the requested use will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood, um, which really doesn't apply, excuse me, to residential uses within the zone, residential zone that they're intended. Um, so those are the findings that the board is required to make. Uh, should the board decide to move forward in favor of the application, there are three standard um, conditions that the board would include. The first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, number two, that the building inspector is hereby notified they are to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And number three, the board shall maintain a continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. Um, <clears throat> and I was going to also recommend um, two additional conditions. Uh, the first is that the applicant is to provide revised construction drawings documenting all changes discussed at the hearing for the, to the inspectional services department for review. And the second was that the proposed mudroom is to be located six inches from the corner of the building. Um, with that, are there any other conditions that members of the board would like to put forward? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. As I sort of signaled earlier, I've been thinking we, in terms of the general process that we've had where porches are, uh, are allowed to invade the setback requirement and then they're turned into something sort of other than porches. And we've had a little discussion about that uh, with the applicant, and that really doesn't seem to me to be a potential issue um, in this case. Um, but I think that in general, uh, where we are relying as we are today on the porch being in the public realm and the importance that is for terms of the public good uh, that that has uh, for being part of the community and enhancing the community, uh, it's important to maintain that value um, and while the zoning bylaw certainly allows for people to, to build a porch to then move to enclose it, uh, I would propose a condition that says it, that reads as follows. The permit holder will not file an application seeking to enclose the porch under section 5.39D of the zoning bylaw or as an amendment to the special permit or under any other provision of the zoning bylaw within three years of the effective date of the special permit. And the purpose there is simply to provide a, in general, in, in this kind of a situation is to provide a time so that it may very be, well be that in the future, this owner or a different owner may reconsider uh, what they want to do with this structure, uh, but at least there should be a reasonable time between now and then that we protect the town away from essentially a two-step way of, of allowing the living space of the house to invade the required setback. Um, and I, I think I, I will be inclined to propose such a thing. Now, obviously, if the applicant had said, no, actually, I was thinking next year of, of moving my living room into the mudroom, uh, then we would know what the situation is. And some of the things that the chair said in the summary of the application would not have been said. Uh, so I would propose that that we do that. Um, I this this can this proposal does not relate to the mudroom because I assume and would like to 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 make sure that this is not an unusual assumption on my part that the final plans include what's designated as a mudroom and if there were any proposal uh, to change the mudroom into a different kind of use that would be inconsistent with the final plans that we are approving and would be required to come back to us. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. 
So with that, there are the three standard conditions plus three additional conditions. Are there any other conditions that any members of the board would like to put forward or are there any concerns about the additions stated for this application? Nope. Seeing none, um, So we are at the point where we are concluding this hearing. Um, I would ask, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Hanlon, if he would be willing to draft a, a written decision in favor of approval. I'd be pleased to do so. Thank you very much. So with that, um, chair moves to close the public hearing for docket number 3812, 15 Merrigan Street. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. So this is a roll call vote of the board to close the public hearing for 15 Merrigan Street. Uh, so roll call vote of members present, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Rigadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and the chair <laughs> votes yes. Um, so we are, uh, this hearing is closed. Um, and the intention is that at the subsequent hearing, which will be September 24th, we will vote on the final written decision. So appreciate the applicants uh, appearing before the board today. Thank you. Uh, one question. Um, sure. Because this is my first rodeo. Absolutely. With um, so, uh, so there's these three exceptions that will be part of the draft. And then I need to provide you with the, um, schematic of the new, of where the drawings of the new, um, excuse me, with the six inch indentation. So um, when you file for the permit, yeah, it would have that adjustment to it, but it does okay. not need to come back to us. Okay. I wasn't sure if you needed it before this, the 24th. Oh, no, no, no. It's for review by the bill, by the building inspector. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, with that, uh, the next item on our agenda is docket 3814, 200 Hi. Broadway. Um, so we, Mr. LeBlanc from our board is has asked to be recused on this item, so I will let him go. Um, and I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves and see what they're looking to do. Thank you, Mr. Klein and to the board. Good evening, uh, my name is Ricardo Rulo. I'm here uh, on behalf of uh, Kristen Germano, who is also here with us. Uh, we are respectfully seeking approval for a second curb cut on 200 Broadway. <clears throat> uh, we are currently in the process of rehabbing this home. And um, currently we have four parking spaces on Broadway. So two tandem parking uh, spaces uh, to the left of the subject property. We are seeking to skinny down that driveway, make it just uh, uh, one tandem uh, space. Uh, so for two vehicles. And then we are seeking to have a similar curb cut and a similar driveway with two parking spaces, again, tandem on the quieter street over on Foster Street. Um, we believe that this, this is a benefit to the surrounding area. Uh, first and foremost, it's a safety issue, both to the occupants of the property and to the public. Um, as we all know, Broadway is, a, is one of the busiest streets in Arlington and, um, and it is high traffic and backing out of uh, a driveway on Broadway does present its challenges, again, safety issues as well. Um, speaking of that, uh, Foster, as we may know, is a uh, quieter street. It's a one-way street, um, safer to access, safer to egress out of a parking space. Um, moreover, if I could, could state, I believe that, that having two curb cuts is more aesthetically pleasing on this property. Um, on Broadway, as I mentioned, there's four parking spaces currently there. Our next door neighbor um, has a similar parking space with four parking spaces. So it kind of gives us a feel of a parking lot when you see eight vehicles there. 
Uh, we believe that by by skinning down Broadway's driveway and having more greenery, it'll look nicer to the area. Um, also, we do appreciate that uh, that Foster Street neighbors may have some concerns. Um, I do want to point out that by us putting the uh, this proposed driveway on Foster Street, it would remove two uh, street parking uh, spaces. So I, I would look at it as a net even in that it, it um, although it may add two parking spaces to Foster Street with the driveway, it will reduce the street itself by two spaces. Um, with that said, uh, I do note that there was a transportation review, which I uh, did examine. And I, I do note that it was very favorable and that there are no um, safety concerns with this uh, additional curb cut. Uh, in walking the, the neighborhood, as many of you know, even up, up on Lockland, where my family's from, there's uh, many curb cuts, uh, many corner lots that have two curb cuts. So I think that it will blend in with the neighborhood. Uh, as stated, it's aesthetically pleasing. And uh, we, we we do hope uh, that uh, that the board does allow this, but as always, we're, we're open to any questions and hopefully we can address them. Great. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, just a, a, a brief correction. So the board would, the the seeking is for a second driveway. Um, the board has no jurisdiction over curb cuts. So thank just to, just to clarify that the board doesn't do curb cuts. Um, so, but thank you very much. So let me go ahead and share the site plan. Um, so this is the plan that's being proposed um, at present. Uh, so Broadway is at the bottom, uh, Foster is to the right. Um, the existing driveway uh, is sort of, if you imagine, pretty much double the width of this. Um, don't know if it comes this far into the property. Do you know? Uh, sure. So there used to be a garage way in the back. So I, I believe it goes almost to that second car right now. And uh, okay. Mr. Mano, if I, please chime in if I'm incorrect with that. But yes, it, it, it is essentially the same, except it's a little bit... Uh, uh, it, so the it would be essentially the same, a little bit longer on the left side, mm -hmm. uh, on the Broadway side, and then the driveway on the Foster Street is com would be completely new. Okay, that's correct, Ricardo. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, and so, just to so the obviously the the outline of the house has front steps leading up direction of Foster has a small rear decks uh, with stairs leading off. Um, on both sides of the house, there is an egress window well um, on both sides. And uh, it's not shown on the plans, but the uh, condensers for uh, the heat pump system are located in the side uh, immediately adjacent to the house, sort of vaguely in this area right now. And on this, and then for the second unit, they're on this side. That, that is correct. And uh, if, if this is allowed, we would probably be looking to uh, lift the subject uh, uh, condensers that are on the Foster Street side as well, about five mm -hmm. feet. But uh, again, just to make it more accommodating for the vehicles. Okay. Um, so this application is under Section uh, 6110A of the Zoning Bylaw, which um, deals with parking spaces. Um, so parking, so in Arlington, parking is not allowed uh, within the front yard, uh, which is the distance from the house uh, to the street, but it does, it is allowed in the side and the rear. Um, and where this is the corner lot, uh, this house has two front yards, which are the facing Foster and Broadway. It has a rear yard, which I believe the intent is the rear yard is the the yard on the left hand side of this image and the side yard is the at the top um so the uh, so the parking in the side yard um is towards the top of the image and the parking in the rear yard is to the left of the image um they are sh the you're showing the parking for four um so the required minimum is one per unit so the minimum is two 
Uh, so this is additional parking beyond what is required under the bylaw. Um, and the bylaw requires that if there is parking in the side yard, that a vegetated buffer be provided um, between the driveway and the adjacent property. So I just want to ask if you could comment about what the, the nature of that vegetated buffer is here. Yes, thank you. Uh, we were asked by the town and uh, we, we, we did actually make the buffer a little bit bigger, um, but yes, it's going to be open green space. Uh, currently there is a uh, chain link fence as well. Uh, we are certainly open to um, uh, any suggestions that the town may have, but uh, absolutely intend to keep that uh, green, vegetative, and um, uh, again, if needed, additional plantings can certainly go there as well. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so as the applicant had noted, the board does have a letter um, from John Alessi, who is uh, the town's uh, transportation planner, uh, senior transportation planner, excuse me, um, which comments about the the safety of the second driveway on Foster. Um, it's a it's a part of the record. I'm not going to go through and um, and summarize it because I'm sure I will do a very bad job of doing so. Um, but there's also um, a letter from 7375 Foster Street to the board, a letter, a separate letter for 75 Foster Street, and a letter from uh, Chris Loretti, a resident of Adam Street. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and um, ask for questions and comments from members of the board. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So I, I walk by this property almost daily, so, but not usually when school lets out, which is when the, which is when the rush is. Uh, the street has resident only parking on the, uh, during, during the main part of the day, uh, all the way up and down it. Uh, generally when I've gone there practically at any time other than where the uh, other than the school when school convenes and lets out, uh, there's very little parking uh, on the street. And uh, <clears throat> as somebody who walks in the middle of the street far more often than I should, uh, I don't have to scamper out all that often. So my view is basically that that this there's a peak hour, uh, two peak hours. Uh, for this street, uh, it doesn't seem to me to be uh, particularly, it certainly it is not, doesn't come close to matching Broadway as far as traffic is concerned. Um, on the other hand, I think that the residents uh, who have talked about this have got some significant points. Uh, certainly, this is not the, strictly the situation. Uh, <clears throat> and it seems to me that uh, uh, that in order to actually come to a firm conclusion on which way the safety issue uh, cuts uh, would require more specific study or maybe the sort of thing we do on a 40B, but we'd actually have traffic counts, um, some a little bit more information about the geometry of the intersections and so forth. Um, so I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Alessi, but... I'm not totally persuaded that there is a strong safety consideration one way or the other. In other words, both 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 the existing situation and the proposed situation have the pros and cons. I am very persuaded that putting a driveway in that narrow space between this and 75, uh, 7375 is likely to be damaging uh, to the property values of 7375 uh and i'm it it it's it that in part is due to the fact that 7375 itself is very nearly right on the property line uh, but this is a part of arlington that was that was developed long ago uh when zoning was not a big issue and you can't really fault 
uh, previous the the other buildings for that. Um, so I'm a little bit. I need to. I would need to have someone show me that more than we than we have so far that there really is a strong safety concern in favor of this to make it counterbalance uh, the very clear land use concern that you have because of the outline of the properties. We just say that it may be nice to skid me down the driveway on Broadway, um, but as the photograph in Mr. Loretti's letter indicates, um, there's room there for uh, four cars. Um, and they, they, the neighbors don't have to necessarily you know, work out elaborate, elaborate dances to figure out what comes out and and uh, and what doesn't. Uh, and the, the way in which the new building or the remodeled building is put together, the second house, the one that would probably take advantage of the of the northern part of the southern. Uh, uh, merges right onto where the the wider parking space, parking lot, parking lane would be, the parking driveway would be, uh, and would be a fairly convenient thing for the applicant. Um, so when I go through all of this, I think that there's some there's some good points and some bad points uh, either way. Uh, but the one thing I feel pretty sure about is that um, the people who live next door, the abutters, have a lot to lose and are likely to uh, on any variety of this of this plan. And I'm sort of inclined to answer. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, Mr. Rulo? Uh, you sure. Well, as always, I appreciate uh, uh, pros and cons, and obviously, I defer to the board as uh, I I can certainly uh, attest that I uh, that I'm not. Uh, uh, living and breathing uh, uh, zoning matters all day long, but I I, I do want to point out that uh, again there will be vegetation on the Foster Street side. Uh, mm -hmm. There already is a fence, and um, uh, you know I I, I I I do appreciate the the Foster Street residents, and uh, I know that they're knowledgeable as well as to the zoning matters and. Um, Again, I, I just I, I just uh, look at the vegetation. I think that that probably could solve a lot of the concerns that uh, that the neighbor may have. But um, but as always, I appreciate what the board has to say. Thank you, Mr. Rook. Are you aware of any history of traffic incidents involving cars leaving on the Broadway side? I I, I am not, other than personal experience. I guess backing out of a busy road, but. Uh, okay. Um, uh, being in Broadway and Somerville, I feel like I have the same uh, the the same experiences. But uh, but no, I, I didn't notice that the town has a has a uh, crash website, but I could certainly look into that. So, mm -hmm. thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yes, sir. So um, I also walked on Foster. I drove around a couple of times, and you know, I think that. Uh, you know, the point was made by one of the neighbors in a letter saying that it is a main cut through from Broadway to Mass Ave. And I do believe that that is true. I'm not sure what the traffic counts would be. I know that there probably are peak hours, but the peak hours are the important part of all of this because the peak hours have to do with kids coming and going to Gibbs School. And when I looked back coming from Gibbs School up, the driveways on that side of the street um, are usually double width between two houses. And so the lines of sight between the houses is fairly wide and gives uh, children walking, talking, doing whatever they're doing, you know, an opportunity to see something backing out or driving out of a driveway. Um, when you get to the space that's being proposed for the additional parking, you know, it's narrow and the line of sight, as far as I can tell, if you're coming out toward Broadway, is very limited between 75, whatever the two numbers on that house are, and where the parking is proposed. The fact of the fence and the vegetation may actually, in some ways, make it worse because they may obscure seeing a car that's actually backing out. Um, I live on a busy street as well, and I'm well aware of coming out of a driveway. 
And I know that people oftentimes will talk in terms of the challenge of backing out onto a busy street. When you're coming out of a driveway, you got to back up one way or the other. You can either back into the driveway or back out of the driveway. I think it's a lot safer backing into a driveway. And as I looked at that space as it currently exists, there's a plenty of space to pull up by the driveway and to back up into the driveway. And interestingly enough, on Google Maps, there's a picture of the four car driveway with somebody back having back in. And, and so I think that that supports the point. So I'm not all that persuaded that this is this you know, dire danger that exists on Broadway. I think it can just as easily back into the driveway and be able to pull out front ways. Um, so those are my observations. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Other members of the board? Uh, I, I guess, uh, Mr. Klein, if Bruno? I may state, thank you. I, I, as, as I know we're all aware too, that there is 20 feet before a car can park. So hopefully if this is considered by the board that uh, uh, that if the cars are pulled up 20 feet, if there's vegetation between where the car is and the home and the fence, hopefully um, there will be 20 feet for both the pedestrians and for the vehicle to look both ways during those peak hours. Just wanting to point that out. Thank you. Um, so prior to the, uh, the, the, so the, this building used to be a two family house. So it's one over the other. Um, it has been redeveloped as a duplex side by side. Um, as a part of that, the extended porch, um, that was open on the first floor and enclosed on the second floor that faced down Foster street was removed. Um, and that's now the area that's proposed for the driveway. Um, it, it feels like a fairly significant change in the the way that this building now is going to be interacting with its neighbor. Um, and it, certainly having car and sort of going from having sort of the quietest side of the house against um, the adjacent, it's now proposed basically to have cars that go about 80% of the way along that side lot line, um, which really fundamentally changes the character of that yard from being sort of a, a quiet place that uh, for sort of public engagement to just being you know, a, a storage place for vehicles. Um, the other co concern I had, I, so this looking at Foster Street, um, this would become the first driveway on Foster. The next driveway is 35 feet farther down. Um, and this is fairly close to the corner. Um, I was there in the middle of the morning, probably about 10 a.m. for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, there were probably a dozen cars on Broadway. There were no cars on Foster, um, apart from the, the construction vehicles that were um, coming and going. Um, so I'm a little concerned about the have, putting a driveway closer to the corner. I know it's farther than 20 feet, which is the sort of the minimum that the state recommends. Um, but in this situation, it sort of it does uh, create a, 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 a new it's basically people coming around the corner would have to recognize now there's a new driveway um, and they need to be prepared to stop at a different location should a car be coming out. Um, but I, I, I think my my primary concern is just the the change in that side of the house from being, um, sort of the the quiet side of the house and one that, you know, has a relationship to the pro property next door to one that really is just going to be, um, a place to store vehicles, uh, but extending almost the entire length of that side lot line. I I can certainly appreciate that. Um... I guess my counterpoint to that is my uh, my current neighbors who like to be out on their porches at all hours of the night. So uh, you know we we we're now removing those two porches that are on the right side that 
sometimes let's be honest are, mm -hmm. are problematic um and uh so it it could be viewed depending on the the uh the, the way that the occupants are using it uh it could be less stressful in that area as compared mm -hmm. to others that might enjoy that uh, three quarter uh, three three quarter a uh, year long porch on the top mm -hmm. and then the porch on the bottom um and then just uh, i guess the other point with the uh with the driveway being on foster i, I certainly appreciate that as well too um um i think that the the uh, the users of that road might might actually like the fact that they're aren't going to be those two cars that are always parked on Foster Street. Um, so it might make navigating off of a off of a, a th throughway uh, onto the side road easier, more manageable. But I certainly appreciate, I, I guess, as everybody brought up uh, positives and negatives, uh, I certainly appreciate that as well, too. So. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Just two three quick comments on, on sort of factual matters. One is that the, the residents of the, the air neighbor, the, the butter is, is quite right about the speed at which people make turns on to Foster Street. Both the left turn, if you're headed uh, towards Arlington Center, uh, and the right turn, because you've got a, a, a lot of space there, uh, it, it, they do tend to not slow down as much making the turn as you do on on more conventionally designed uh, uh, intersections. Um, and second is that I just want to stress that when you talk about the value of taking parking spaces away, during the night, of course, nobody can park on Foster Street. During the day, only residents can park on Foster Street. Uh, I almost never see a car parked in front of where this house is on at any time I go by. Uh, and I frequently go by at exactly the time when you might when you might see it. There just isn't there isn't very much parking. Uh, uh, there isn't very much parking that that goes on there. And and again, for the majority of the day, it, it's illegal for anybody but residents to park there. Um, I I I didn't see it on the email. Uh, if, if I might, uh, may uh, I I think uh, Broadway. Uh, if if my uh, 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 math is correct, I think Broadway might actually gain a parking space by the removal of the space, but I I I do need to look into that further. But um, uh, I certainly will defer to Mr. Hanlon as to whether cars are currently parking there during the daytime or not. Um, and I do certainly appreciate that there's no nighttime parking either at that uh, on the street. Are there other questions or comments from the board? None. I'm going to go ahead and move on to public comment. Um, so again, public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. If you wish to, those members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the but the raise the hand button on the reactions tab in the Zoom app. Those calling you by phone, you can dial star nine. Uh, all questions should be addressed through the chair. So are there any members of the public wishing to address this hearing, which is docket number 3814-200 Broadway? Uh, we have our first hand up, um, Chris Loretti. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? We certainly can, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I I sent you a, an email yesterday, which I understand you received and distributed to the other members of the board. I won't go through the whole thing. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple points, and in particular regard to the safety of the students who go to the Gibbs School. Um, this sidewalk, which will now, um, if this proposal is approved, have a curb cut in it and have cars backing out onto Broadway is where the uh, traffic official who is there every morning um, directing students to the Gibbs School directs all of the students walking to the school. Because this 
driveway would be on the same side as of the school. Um, it's where all of the students would be walking. So it's not just a matter of cars in this area. It's also a matter of the students. There may well be more traffic, more automobile traffic on Broadway, but certainly during the hours when the school's um, you know, opening and closing, there is far more pedestrian traffic on Foster than there is on Broadway. And, and I would hope you would keep that into consideration. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I find this proposal just very strange because the existing driveway for this house you know, entirely meets the zoning requirements. The house is approximately 100 years old. I've lived here 30 years. I can't recall any accidents occurring by cars backing out of the driveway going onto Broadway for this house, or for that matter, in the, any of the other two family houses that abut, abut Broadway in this neighborhood. Um, and, I, and I also think it's, it's, it's actually having that driveway makes the property less desirable um, for potential owners. It's a pain in the neck if you are on one of these side streets, and I'm on one, I'm, I'm not the house on the corner, but I'm one block in, to get back to your driveway when there's when you, all the streets are one way, you have to go all the way around the block to get home or to go out, um, you know, as the case may be. And I really don't see what the benefit is. It just creates more traffic uh, on the street. And it also, the other par um, part of Foster Street that's very busy at um, at the times the school is opening and closing is a pick up and drop up drop off area, which is just a few houses down. And and directionally, this you know adding more traffic. Um, you know, to that area is, is not desirable at all. So I, I would hope the board would reject this proposal. It, it's simply unnecessary. It's a tremendous burden on the house next door. And, and I really don't see that it benefits the prospective new owners of the condominiums at, at the site. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Loretti. Uh, next on our list uh, is Rachel Storr. Thank you, Chair. Uh, to the members of the zoning board, I am the director butter. I live at 73 Foster Street. And as we've sent a letter from the condo board outlining issues around the safety, but also the dimensions of the driveway and the environment, um, we are strongly opposed to this second driveway being added to 200 Broadway. Again, as Chris nicely mentioned, this does filter all the foot traffic from the safety official down Foster Street. And this adds another place where students that are walking to school could be potentially harmed. Um, and as we look at the driveway next to, between 200 Broadway and Foster Street, we're looking at a driveway that is about six feet from our bedrooms here. And while we talk about a vegetated buffer, I would strongly ask the zoning board to ask for additional dimensions and measurements of the space, especially with the HVAC units and the window well how are occupants of this future building going to be able to get out of their car and actually get to their house? And as we look at that space and looking forward to, I am looking forward to having new neighbors as they move in and really enjoy this property. Um, what does their yard look like? How are they going to be able to enjoy that? Are we truly thinking about essentially paving the, the yard and the yard space and prioritizing cars over families and their pedestrians? So again, this, this proposed driveway is very close to our property. We think it is a safety concern for the neighborhood. We don't think this fits the character of the overall space and how we thought of this neighborhood moving into it. And we, we strongly, strongly oppose this property having a driveway, second driveway be added. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, next on our list is uh, Deborah Melkin. Hi there, sorry, I needed to unmute. Thank you to the board for having this and listening to us. I'm also one of the abutters. I live in 75 Foster Street. So we've been able to see how the renovations are going and seeing how things affect the street. Our street, as has been brought up previously, is a little busier than one would expect. It is a quiet street, but it is a pass through. But we also have other th businesses in the area that also have their cars parking on Foster Street, even though there is a sign that says it's supposed to be residential, especially during the day. I often find that that's always not the case. And especially on the weekends, it can, it can get busier. So we do have a lot of people cutting through Foster to get to the light 
at Mass Ave to make turns there rather than going on Bates Street and, and using the lights on that street. So we are as a cut through a quiet Saturday night. I have sat on the front porch and in 10 minutes seeing five, 10 cars pass by and it's a very quiet night and I'll see that. So it does get a pass through in terms of safety, but we have businesses across the street that uh, hit Kitty Corner for like uh, the the uh, breadboard bakery, which is across the street. Sometimes our customers will also park on our street to go across to, to do that. We also have the dance school that's around the corner. So when they have special events, their cars are often parked on our street as you have parents dropping their kids off or walking them over. So I think it's, while it is a quiet street, it is busier. And I think to have a new driveway so close to the corner, I think is a safety concern we are a li we are concerned about as as Rachel had mentioned, we also are concerned about the distance that the driveway has between that house and the property line. There is a, a fence there. The question is whether that f we've done due diligence to make sure the fence of which side of the property line, but it is not a lot of space and anything that hits on that line is really going to limit the person's uh, ability to get in and out of the car, depending on where the driveway goes, how it looks and other um other spatial dimensions that we'll want to make sure and, and double check to make sure that they have those spaces. We, we want to have good neighbors and we want them happy in their home, but there is concern about what this driveway would do and the extra safety concerns that we've already addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Malkin. Are there other members of the public who wish to address this hearing on 200 Broadway? Seeing no new hands, no one waving. We'll go ahead and close this hearing uh, for public comment. Um, just to roll in just a minute. Um, so what the board has before it, this is a, an application uh, for a special permit under section 6110A of the zoning bylaw, which is the parking. Uh, the zoning board is allowed to approve a second driveway with, uh, but it, um, in this case, there are specific findings that are attached um, to that decision. Um, and just briefly, the, the second driveway can be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population. That a second driveway can be added in a manner that allows for adequate provision of transportation. And that a second driveway may be added in a manner that conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. So, and in addition to that, um, as on the prior case, uh, the board also, uh, because it is a special permit, needs to uh, meet the findings for a special permit under section 333. Uh, so with that, Mr. Rulo, I believe you had a comment. Uh, uh, no, uh, well, thank you. I, I did have a couple of thoughts, but uh, I, I guess the, the one thing I would like to state is that uh, uh, the, as I stated before, the air conditioning uh, condensers are going to be raised, so there should be adequate uh, space. The, the, the footage uh, meets the town's requirements and um, uh, I am pleased to hear that there is a guard right around the corner from us. I, I do appreciate that uh, uh, that that the street is occupied and used by uh, by students, and um, I think that guard would also be helpful to us too if uh, if there was that additional part uh, driveway. Um, uh, I do know, and this happens a lot. I, I do have my my client here, Mr. Mono, the applicant, if she has anything additional to say that I may have forgot, if I may ask Mr. Klein to see if she has any additional comments. Sure, Mr. Mono. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Um, just that I understand that my neighbors um, feel that it's close. I just, I feel, especially not only with the, the safety, I feel for the other neighbor on Broadway, it's like looking at a parking lot and it's beneficial to them to have the green space to look at and maybe not a neighbor on Foster Street. Um, also, I, I feel everyone's backing out of their driveway on Foster Street. Um, so for one not to be safe and the other one is okay. 
I just find that a little difficult um, to understand. Um, it is a busy street, but I don't think it's any busier than any of the other streets heading towards Mass Ave. Um, um, I just feel that it would be beneficial to the owner that's moving in as well. So they're not parking so far away from their unit and having to walk around the corner. You know, it's a good distance coming in with bundles and everything else. I just, and there's plenty of room there. I just asked for the board to consider it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mano. Um, so there are other uh, considerations the, or comments from the board before we review what the required findings? Go ahead. Uh, so under section 6110A for the location of parking spaces, um, second driveway may be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population. Uh, so this driveway would not change the population. It would change where slightly where they park, um, but it would not cr create an undue concentration of population. Um, in the chair's opinion. Uh, second, the second driveway may be added in a manner that allows adequate provision of transportation. Um, currently, the, this is maintaining the existing amount of parking for the property. Um, so it, it would allow for an adequate provision of transportation to have additional parking. Um, and then the third is that the second driveway may be added in a manner that conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. Um, I will admit that I do have some concerns about this one. Um, because essentially it's it's not conserving the value of the land that's there, um, you know, by essentially by paving it, um, you know, it's impacting the value of the land um, and is creating an impact on the, the adjacent neighbor. Um, both in, in their building and in their land by uh, providing this so close um, and to such a great extent along the, the property line. Um, and so in, in my opinion, I have a, I do have a trouble with that, making that third finding. Um, but I, so I would ask the members of the board what their opinion, what their senses are of the three required findings under 610A, or 6110A, excuse me. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I don't. I, I I think that there's not a problem of undue concentration of population, but I would, on the basis of the record that we have, be unable to make either of the other two findings here. Uh, I would not be able to say that the uh, that the driveway can be put in in a way that uh, avoids that allows adequate provision of transportation. Uh, we've traditionally looked at that in a broad way to include the various kinds of traffic safety concerns that uh, have been discussed here. Um, and I know that there's evidence in the record that indicates that moving the driveway off a busy street like Broadway onto uh, what everybody would admit is a less busy street on Foster uh, might have a substantial, might have a you know, benefit as far as safety is concerned. Uh, but other concerns have been raised. Uh, Mr. DuPont raised the site distance issue, which I think is significant. Um, he also raised, and and the people who spoke from the who spoke to us um, emphasized the peril for school kids uh, that may happen by having a uh, an additional conflict space. Uh, located here and located in an area that is uh, particularly a crossroads or a, a place where the student children are, are uh, inclined to go. Um, I think that that uh, the observation that because of this of the structure of the intersection, the geography of the intersection, the um, cars do go fast when they get onto Foster Street and right where this driveway would be so that conceivably this may be a situation where we'd like a little more space there. Um, so I'm just basically thinking that the, 
the evidence is mixed on this, but our job is not just to say yes if the evidence is mixed or yes if there's a reasonable argument that maybe there's a safety plus. Our job is to decide whether we can make a finding, uh, an affirmative finding that this would not create safety problems and that it is consistent uh, with the adequate provision of transportation. And I don't think we can do that. On the on the question, the third part, I share the chair's concern. Um, I think that that this is a very difficult thing for the people who, who live next door. Um, I, their building is very close to where this driveway will be. Um, hopefully, we won't have people who like to blare their radios while they're sitting in their car in the driveway. But, you know, anybody who uses their driveway the way they wish. You, I don't see how a buffer is possibly going to solve that problem because the problem is only partly and not ma not mainly due to the narrowness of the uh, the distance between the driveway and the chain link fence and the property line. It's due to the fact that because of the way these houses have been built a century ago, there's hardly any distance on the other side of the property line. You, you could put Yellowstone there and it wouldn't really solve the problem. Uh, the difficulty is that that sticking a driveway right next to the house in this way, uh, rather than a green space that covers that is basically a yard, is almost certain to diminish the property value of the house of the house next door, and equally certain to diminish the their quiet enjoyment of of their property. Um, you know, before we even get to section three point three point three, we have to be able to get through these specific specific things. And for the reasons I've just said, I I would not be able to make an affirmative finding in favor of the application on either of the second two criteria. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Other members of the board. Mr. Chair. Ms. Hoffman. I, I just wanted to speak up to say that I, I share the concerns um, that um, the rest of the board members have voiced so far. So I think it would be it would be hard to approve. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. Well, uh, I yeah. Uh... If if I may, uh, Ricardo Rulo again. I, I yep. just want to thank the board. Um, I'd like to thank the the, the entire process. I, I I do want to just make a quick testamentary. Uh, your staff has been wonderful uh, to deal with uh, throughout this process. Um, yep. I'll I'll continue to speak with the neighbors, but uh, uh, you know, as always, I, I I do have to respectfully ask uh, for your kind consideration, and um, I'll certainly follow up with the town and, and the neighbors as well too. So do you, so um, basically the, so I think unfortunately, uh, as far as your, your, your case is concerned, it doesn't look like the board would be acting in favor. Do you want to, the board to move forward uh, towards a written decision or do you want to uh, withdraw the application? Um, I, I, if the decision's not being made right now, uh, the written decision, if I could perhaps just sleep on it, as I do have to weigh my options as well. Absolutely. Um, as I do respectfully disagree, <laughs> although I appreciate <laughs> sure. uh, everybody's a position. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rulo. Thank you. Um, so at this point, uh, the majority of the board has expressed that they would have difficulty um, meeting the findings for uh, approval of this special permit. Um, just to ask Mr. Halen, would, would your sense be that we should prepare a decision um, stating that the board would be uh, denying the permit, or should we prepare a a statement i guess we can't really write one in favor and then deny that we would have to write one stating the intention to deny i guess you could do it either way but the but it would be much better 
it would be much better just to have an opinion that proposes to deny because then the opinion would carefully marshal the evidence that is before us and the judgments that we've made based upon that evidence. And Mr. Rulo has already indicated that he has views that are different from what are likely to be expressed there. Uh, in case he wants to take this any further, he sort of is entitled to have a written opinion that makes perfectly clear the, the reasons we have for proceeding in the way that we choose chose to do. Mr. Mm -hmm. I, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I think Mr. Rulo suggested that he wanted to sleep on it. And I, I think that was an answer to your question about whether he wanted to um, withdraw. Mm-hmm whether he wanted to have us proceed. And so if he wants to withdraw, I'm not sure we want to issue anything until that decision is made. Okay. So for clarification, I guess that's the question of Mr. Rulo. Uh, yeah. I, I guess so, so I, just I to clarify, you. there are the three options. So. Yes, I, I, I do thank you for taking, I was going to bring that up again. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Yes, yeah, so if the board doesn't mind, if, if I could just circle back with uh, uh, with the ZBA or with the uh, with the administration mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but yes, if we could hold off on any written, even expression of, uh, uh, of, of, of where you intend to go, I think that would be beneficial as uh, as I do what I would like to speak with Mr. Mono and and also mm -hmm. have the opportunity to speak with the neighbors too to see, uh, see if there's any further discussion. Well, in that case, it sounds like a continuance yes. is the, yeah. the that, choice. I apologize for not presenting that initially. I'll take option number four then. Um, <laughs> Uh, so with that, uh, we have a request from the applicant to continue uh, the public hearing for docket 3814-200 Broadway. Um, uh, may I have a uh, motion to continue? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Um, so we have a vote of the board to continue uh, on docket 3814-200 Broadway. Uh, roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Yes uh, or no? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hanlon? Yes. Uh, Mr. Riccadelli? Yes. Ms. Hoffman? Yes. And the chair votes yes. We are continued on 200 Broadway. Uh, we thank everyone uh, for their attendance and for their um uh, commentary this evening. Uh, with that, next on our agenda is item number five, docket 3815-32 Princeton Road. Um, so if I could ask the uh, the applicant, uh, and I believe their builder who is presenting them uh, this evening, and uh, tell us what they are proposing to do. Uh, yes, uh, Matt Adams with my wife, Olivia, um, of 32 Princeton. Um, we have three young children. Um, one of them is three. He's severely disabled. He's a wheelchair user. Um, is expected to be for his entire life. Uh, we live in a two-story colonial um, with a front enclosed vestibule area. It's about 35 inches from the ground level. Right now, we have no way of getting his wheelchair into the home. Um, so that enclosed vestibule is um, in violation of the 25 foot setback already. We have two options um, to get that wheelchair into the home. One is to build an aluminum ramp, which would take up basically our entire front yard, which is fairly small. Um, unfortunately, the, the vestibule is too small to accommodate a wheelchair lift. So um, we have put in permit applications to remove that vestibule and replace it with a covered front porch. Uh, that will accommodate the wheelchair left. Sorry, it's my dog. Um, the, the porch and the left have been approved, um, the permits, but the, the porch will be covered. And because it's within the, the 25 foot setback, that requires a special permit. So uh, we are applying for um, just a cover for the porch that we have to put in to accommodate the lift. And we do have our um, contractor here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, 
so just to clarify for the board, so the existing deck um, that is uh, a part of this application has already been approved by the building department because it does meet the requirements of 539B uh, for an open deck. Um, the uh, the lift is not before us this evening. Um, it falls under a, there's been some discussion between myself and the legal department as to exactly where it falls, but it essentially it does not fall under our jurisdiction for this evening. Uh, so that's not before us. Um, what is before us is just the uh, the conversion of the deck to a porch, which is allowed under 539D uh, by special permit from the board. Um, And so, um, what the so the let me go ahead and pull up the uh, plan. That's not the one I want. That's the one. So I believe you are looking, this is the existing plot plan uh, for the property. <clears throat> a little bit. Um, those the I mean, noted they had an, originally the small entry stoop and chairs. Yes? We can't see your screen. Oh, sorry, I forgot to click the last button. There we go. All, All right. right. Thank you for that. Uh, so this is the plot plan for the property. This is the existing condition. Um, so the driveway is does dip down uh, to a lower level parking. So this is not uh, flat across. Um, this is the they have their existing small entryway top step uh, it steps out to the sidewalk, and then hopefully now you see the proposed. Uh, so this is so it's the proposed covered deck. So the as we said, the deck itself is already approved, um, and the wheelchair lift base is not um, before us this evening. So it's really just the question of uh, covering the deck um, and converting it from a deck to a porch. And then um, the permit set. Uh, so this is showing the existing deck, which is on um, piles, and then the port roof, which would be added on top. Um, and again, just the dimensions of the porch. It's eight feet at the shallow end. It's nine feet at the other end. Um, and I believe approximately 26 feet across. So it's set in set in from the corners of the house on both sides, uh, full, not at all enclosed. So with that, are there questions from the board? Hey, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I really have the same problem, not problem, it isn't really a problem, but the same question I had uh in the earlier case on american street but my understanding is that the rationale for all of this is uh is is not really consistent with with building this porch and then and then expanding it into a uh, uh and then expanding living space in the house into that uh, and we previously approved a condition that was designed just to make sure that there was a point of delay to avoid any single plan to, to make that kind of a change. Uh, and I'd just like to inquire of the applicant whether my understanding is correct and whether a, a condition of that sort would be uh, acceptable to them. Yeah, absolutely. There's 0% chance we'll extend our living area to the porch. We'll be here for more than 20 years. So whatever conditions you want. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. 
Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Mr. Cadelli. So the um, the proposed roof for the porch is flat. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any access, but I just wanted to confirm with the applicant that there's no plan to make that a, a porch or a terrace. It's just a roof. Correct. Yeah, it has, it, it's going to be eight feet wide just for mobility of a wheelchair. And just <laughs> based off of where our windows are, we can't really slope the roof, so it has to be flat. And so we won't be making that a terrace. Understood. Thank you. Any other from the board? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and open this hearing for public comment. Again, public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand. It should be directed to the board for the purpose of helping us inform our decision. You may use the raise hand button under the reactions tab or dial star nine if you're participating by phone. Are there any members of the public who wish to address this application, which is docket 38132 Princeton Road? Uh, Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Uh, just a, a quick question about the roof, which you say is flat. Um, I'm not sure what the the height of the space of the porch is in terms of uh, vertical height from the floor to the roof, but would an option to add a, a mild slope, which I think would significantly improve the look of this uh, deck roof, um, could make it more porch like. Um, is it possible to decrease that uh, that height to add some slope? I will defer to our contractor on that. <clears throat> hey, Steve Moore. Uh, this is Joe Dans from Boston Exterior Remodeling. Uh, so we would, if we were going to do shingles on top of the roof, it really had to be a three pitch or a four pitch to even get a warranty. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have that luxury because of the windows. Um, so that would be no, we couldn't be able to do that. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, uh, I guess what I'm suggesting is less vertical height for the porch. Uh, so That'd currently be... the porch is at seven foot eight um, as the clear height. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you had seen that before. Instead of instead of rising the roof to go where the windows are on the second floor, lowering the lower edge of it to have mm -hmm. less height. Correct. So if we were going to go to warranty every foot, we'd have to go down four inches. So times eight, that's that's too oh. much. To. All right. I understand, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. It's a naive suggestion. Yep. Sorry. Nope, not at all. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, are there other members of the public who wish to address this application? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close this meeting for public comment. Uh, so what the board has before it, this is an application for a special permit under Section 539D of the Zoning Bylaw, uh, which requires that... Um, an existing deck cannot be built upon except by special permit. Uh, so that is the request that's before us today. Uh, the applicant uh, has approval to construct a deck. They're looking to now construct a roof over that deck. The applicant has, has stated that they don't have intentions for enclosing this and are amenable to um, a condition uh, which would uh, disallow that to occur for a period of three years. Um, uh, we had stated before that part of this project for the applicant is the installation of a lift. Um, the lift is not uh, under our jurisdiction. Um, I did review the documentation for the lift, and the only thing I would just note for that for the applicant is that the the size of the concrete pad that's listed in the uh, installation uh, for the lift is different than what's shown on your drawing. So I just want to make sure you take a second look at that just to be sure. Um, and also where you're bringing a because the driveway is dipping down and you're bringing the chair over in that direction, it might make sense to provide some kind of a curb so that the, the you know, gosh forbid that the, the chair rolls into the direction of the, the ledge going down the stair. Um, so I just, I just bring those up for, for general purpose. Um, so with that, um, Section 539D does not have specific findings related to it. 
Uh, so the findings that would be required are found under section 333. Um, so the first finding is that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, so the proposed, so this, what this is, this is going to be an open porch. Um, it'll be used to allow the applicants uh, to the entire family to have better access to their home um, and a more convenient access to their home. And it'll also allow them to enjoy the, the benefits of, of being um, a part of the street while still remaining uh, close to the house and um, will not have uh, adverse effects uh, to the neighbors. Uh, the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Um, as we noted, the five, section 539D allows this by special permit. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Uh, it's desirable for the public because it allows uh, a family that's a part of the neighborhood to remain in the neighborhood uh, despite some challenges. Um, and this provides a, a um, an appropriate way for them to, to still fully enjoy their home uh, with the entirety of their family and for them to be a part of the neighborhood uh, that they're a, a part of. Uh, requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Uh, this is set back from the sidewalk. It will not affect sight lines um, for pedestrian safety and uh, neither for, it will not create any additional traffic congestion and then beyond what already exists in a very, very quiet neighborhood. Uh, while the requested use will not overload any public system, uh, the only public system that would be affected is electricity to a very minor extent for lighting. Um, the Special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. There are no special regulations for this use. Uh, requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, this is a, a, a well thought and well designed um, addition. It is very much in keeping with the district. Um, as we had discussed on an earlier case, it's th that this is uh, construction on the front of the building and it it looks like that is not being brought out fully to the side of the house. Um, and is, a, is of a good scale, a nice scale for the for the size of the house and the size of the neighborhood. Uh, requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, it shouldn't have any effect on either, and it will not cause um, an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood where this is a single family use in a single family district. Uh, so those are the findings that the board is required to make. Are there any questions or comments from the board in regards to those findings? Seeing none, uh, there are three standard conditions that the board would typically apply. We have read those into the record earlier this evening, so I will waive the reading unless anybody would like to hear them again. Um, I did want to propose an additional condition, uh, which just states that the proposed access list is not covered under Section 539D and is not reviewed or approved under the special permit, just to clarify that that's not in our scope. Um, are there other conditions uh, being proposed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, it comes to no great surprise that I proposed a uh, three-year delay provision that I read into the record previously, and which I'll rely on if unless somebody wants me to read them again. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there any other conditions that members of the board would want to um, attach? Any other conditions? Seeing none, um, so the board, so again, this is a special permit under 539D. Uh, we have reviewed the findings that are required for um, the granting of a special permit. We have discussed five um, conditions which would be attached to that permit. Um, so with that, I would ask Mr. Hanlon if he would be willing to draft a decision um, in favor of approval of this application. Mr. Chairman, I would be I would be pleased to do so. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. With that, um, as chair, I move to close the public hearing for docket 38532 Princeton Road. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. So this is um, motion to close roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Yes. Uh, Mr. Riccadelli. 
Yes. Ms. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Uh, we are closed on the public hearing for uh, Princeton Road. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you appearing before us. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you, you as well. Uh, so with that, that brings us to docket uh, item number six on our agenda, docket 381837 Fountain Road. Um, so if I could ask the uh, applicant, or I believe he's represented by uh, uh, council, uh, Senator Leone, if you would go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you're proposing to do. Good evening. I'm here with, um, excuse me. I'm, I'm here this evening of 37 Fountain Road with Robert Johnson, who's also with us this evening. He, Mr. Johnson wants to add an ADU into an existing shed on his property. It will be an entire um, interior renovation. There won't be any additional structure added, and it will just be re renovating the entire inside of it from a open shed to a two floor unit for well, he's proposing one person, but we can never tell if it's going to be one or two. But it, it would be a 788 square feet of living area. But that includes, from my looking at it, approximately um, only 644 feet of floor space because of the stairway going up. Um, it is allowed under the town master plan and the zoning bylaw, which encourages ADUs under section 5.2. 10.2B1. So he would like to um, get the permission of this board to go ahead and do that. Um, we do not believe it would be detrimental to the neighborhood or to the community in any aspect, nor would it lead to traffic congestion or any um, affect the pedestrian um, traffic at all, nor having any detrimental effect on um, water, storage, or any of the other systems within the town. Um, so we'd like to open up if the board has any questions for us or want to review the plans. We'd be glad to go over them with you. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Leone. Uh, with that, let me just go ahead and where did I just put the thing I was looking for? Um... So this is the proposed plot plan. Um, Correct. So this is is an exist, existing two family, two and a half story house. Uh, it's an R2, I believe. Is it an R1 or an R2 district? I can't recall. Um, I'm going to defer to Mr. Johnson on that one. I believe it is it's a single family residence. Um, I really don't have the answer to that. Okay. Not that it um, makes a difference within the ADU bylaws, but no, nope. we could nope. find nope. out. Yeah. Uh, so what's identified here is the barn, as uh, is the, is the garage for the property. It's this piece, um, and just the drawings. I apologize; those drawings are sideways. I forgot to rotate them before the meeting. Um, so it is an existing garage um, with a gambro roof on top, and the plan is to. Uh, convert the entirety of it into the new accessory dwelling unit. There will no longer be parking in it. Um, and the, so maintain the appearance of the doors at the front. Um, and there's your interiors, proposed the, interiors. Yeah. So in two different directions. <clears throat> um, and then just some shadow studies on the outside. Uh, and then the plan. So this would be um, the lower level uh, mm -hmm. entry and then combined kitchen living room on the first and then upstairs uh, bed and bath. Upstairs. Correct. With some closet space. Yep. And so this is before the board. This is um, filed under five, section Five nine two B one five, um, which requires that a uh, an accessory dwelling unit that is located in an accessory building within six feet of a lot line be required to uh, 
achieve a special permit from the board of review with a finding that it is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the current use of the structure, um, which in this case is a garage. Um, so I was there um, uh, yesterday uh, looking around. Um, I did meet Mr. Johnson while I was there. Um, so this is a is an unusually lot wide lot for this neighborhood. Um, it's effectively a lot and a half. Um, there is no the most the closest house apart from the same house on the lot appears to be at least 40, 50 feet away from um, the existing garage. So it's not sort of up against another person's house. It does back up against another garage um, on the on the back side. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is, in, in my opinion, this is exactly what the town was anticipating when it passed the accessory dwelling unit bylaw was that uh, garage spaces like this that are of a sufficient size to accommodate an additional unit uh, could be converted uh, for that purpose without really impacting the neighborhood um, and thereby creating some additional housing opportunities within the town. So. Um, to, to my eye, this is a very good project. I would open it up for a uh, comment from the board. Mr. Chairman? Mr. DuPont? Well, I was just trying to figure out the math. I went on the town assessor's site and I'm looking at it now and it says that it is R1 and I believe somewhere it also says it's a two family. So I guess my first question is, is it a two family? The existing home is a two family. Because, you know, what I was trying to then figure out in terms of the math was, um, you know, what the B1 um, first bullet would uh, require or permit, because it's, it's the smaller of one half of the floor area or 900 square feet, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of calculating the space that to the accessory dwelling unit. And what I was then trying to figure out, we had a two family over in East Arlington and I know we had to decide to which uh, unit it was yep. going to be assigned to, if I remember correctly. Yep, absolutely. So, and you know, a dwelling unit under the definitions is for occupancy by one household. So I was thinking that you know, one of these two units has to be designated as the principal residence to which the ADU is going to be attached. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't quite figure out, because I think in the the application somewhere, it says it's single family. And I didn't know if there was a con conversion from a two family to a single family planned, but it sort of just gets me back to the basic math question um, which is, as I looked up the uh, assessors, it looks like the floor space on the um, basement, first floor, second floor, and unfinished attic is 1,260 square feet. So, you know, it may well be that, you know, that there's more than one floor per one of the units, but I just wanted to make sure I understood, you know, what we were looking at in terms of how we were calculating either the half of the floor space for the unit that's designated as the principal residence and and or 900 feet. So if somebody could lay that out a little bit, I would like to to hear what that is. Certainly. I so I, yeah. oh, go ahead, Mr. So, sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, go ahead, Mr. Leone. No, I was going to um, not having been inside the house, I was going to ask Mr. Johnson's opinion as to um, which unit is the larger of the two and kind of give us a little description of the interior of the home, existing home. Bob?
Mr. Johnson, you there? They seem to be muted from what I can tell. I wonder if that's yeah. what. Okay, can you hear me now? We can, yes. sir. Okay, hi, how are you? The, um, the, the, it is a two family house. Um, in that area, there were three two family houses built before the town decided on a moratorium to rezone that to a, uh, uh, a, a residential one zone. So this is a, a unique house in, in the effect that it does have, uh, it does, uh, it, it, is, it is qualifying as a two family house. So um, it, it does have a, uh, you know, a first floor and a second floor. And it, and it does have some uh, additional rooms uh, upstairs um, on the on the third floor as well, which uh, were uh, built in there when the uh, house was built. And then they decided to uh, do that moratorium uh, on the uh, on uh, on doing that unit. So between the uh, the square footage of uh, uh, some uh, bedroom space on the uh, the uh, the top floor and the uh, second floor, it could be attached to uh, the second floor quite easily with the floor space. Or um, um, there's some additional uh, space in the basement that uh, could probably qualify as uh, as as a room as well. So uh, the ratio, uh, according to the architect uh, who did the designs for me. Um, um, she said it could go to either the first or second floor because of the way they would measure, men, measure the uh, gambrel because of the, the ceiling heights um, in that top floor in that bedroom because of the design of the uh, gambrel roof um, incorporate, um, I guess you can move the walls into a certain uh, level. So probably the, uh, the total square footage of that unit is probably... Uh, closer to 500 square feet than uh, what is on the plans. Also, um, um, the engineer found that uh, there was no footings. Uh, uh, the the, the uh, original stone foundation only went as deep as two feet. So therefore, in, uh, in the engineering plans call for moving the wall, a wall and closing it in an additional one foot on either side to build an additional wall to support the structure uh, on the first floor, which would even uh, narrow the space even even more so. So I think according to the, the, the floor plans and the original spaces and what the architect figured out that uh, uh, there was no problem in complying with uh, that 50% rule. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. You're welcome. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, if that can please, if that can be demonstrated, you know, that's really all I'm looking to ascertain. Mm -hmm. Would you want us to just include that as a condition that that be confirmed? Absolutely. I think that was addressed to Mr. Dupont, Bob. But we <laughs> will confirm. We will. Confirm. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> we will. We will confirm it. So, so again, and you know, and I realize that some of this is not necessarily all that precise. So, as I was looking again at the assessor's drawing, it, it just seemed to say that you know the second floor was twelve hundred and eighty square feet, and uh, twelve hundred sixty perhaps, and then th it looked like that that was the same floor area for the. Um, it says unfinished attic. I realize that there's some that's been finished. And I would sort of defer to Mr. Uh, Klein in terms of what we could calculate as the total between the, the second floor and the attic. Um, because I, I forget, I didn't write down the number Mr. Leone gave us as far as the total square footage. But I realized also there was a comment about the stairs that are in there not being included in the total. And, and if that's accurate, and I don't know because I'm not familiar with that particular section, but if that's accurate and we're in the 600s then, right? Mm -hmm. I, was well, the I got that just by looking at the um, architecture's um, floor plan drawings where she has written 
on the plants that Mr. Klein just showed us, showing the living area. Um, she had the first floor living area of 340 feet and the second floor living area is 304 square feet. Um, whereas in his application, he had 788, which I believe is just the exterior dimensions multiplied out. So we, I would think it would be more the 644 max, not including those lost space for this um, mm -hmm. interior walls, et cetera. But I mean, we're talking rough numbers there. Yeah. So m with limited math skills, it sounds like we're looking for uh, somewhere around 1,288 square feet for the principal residence. And yeah, I mean, go ahead. I, I think in general, I would be more comfortable having the building inspector run the numbers and yeah, and be be firm. Um, I think I, I feel that we could do this through a condition um, rather than continuing to get a, a final number and then coming back in two weeks and discussing again. Um, Oh. Um, okay. Are there other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Just as an addendum to what the chair just said, I have no doubt, whatever, that if the numbers are as close as um, has just been discussed, if the calculation doesn't come out right first time that uh, everybody can get together with Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Champa, and, and I'm sure that it can be made for you. Thank you. Unless there's something further from the board, I was going to go ahead and move for public comment. Um, so public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand and is to be directed to the board for the purpose of helping inform our decision. Those wishing to, uh, those participating by, on Zoom and wishing to raise their hand can do so using the raise hand button under the, uh, keeps, uh, the React, sorry, they changed the name, or the React tab, um, or DOS start on if you're joining us by phone. So are there members of the public who wish to address this application, which is docket 3818-37 Fountain Road? Seeing none, um, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Uh, so what the board has before it is a request for a special permit under section, oh, we're in that weird time period between when town meeting is acted and things haven't been approved yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is under 510-2B1 bullet five um, of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington, um, which requires that a uh, that allows an accessory dwelling unit, but if it's within six feet of a property line in an accessory structure, it requires a finding of the board that it is not substantially more detrimental than the existing use, um, which in this case is uh, the existing private garage. Um, and so uh, in order to make that finding, um, I think it would be helpful to the board and where it is a special permit, we do need to uh, make be able to make the findings that are found in section 333. Uh, so um, those are that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, so the, the adverse effects um, of converting this garage to uh, residential use um, it would mean that maybe another vehicle is in the driveway, but it also um, is providing uh, additional housing in the town in a manner that is nearly invisible to the town, uh, which is a, a very strong beneficial impact. Uh, the requested use is allowed uh, by special permit with a finding of the board um, on detriment on being detrimental, which we'll return to. Uh, requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Uh, the creation of additional housing in town, especially housing um, that's of a scale that it, uh, it in increases its uh, chances of being affordable um, is absolutely desirable um, and essential in the town at this time. Uh, requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, 
the unit is not required to provide any parking. Um, this the house does have uh, sufficient parking to accommodate a vehicle for uh, a resident of the accessory dwelling unit, uh, should the owner choose to do so. Um, and that would not impair con uh, traffic or impair the pedestrian safety on the property. Um, requested use will not overload any public system. It will be uh, creating an additional unit, but it's a unit that would have very small demands on the existing systems. Um, Special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. We'll return to that one at the end. Uh, the requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. It will have absolutely no effect one way or the other on the character or integrity of the district as it will be essentially invisible from the public, uh, but it will uh, create opportunities for additional members uh, and additional neighbors within the community, which um, could be seen as uh, beneficial. Uh, the requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, it is creating an additional uh, housing unit. It appears to be of a sufficient size and the owner has addressed um, several conditions in the property which will need to be uh, rectified as he moves forward. Uh, so it's, it does appear that this will be um, a, a good positive net gain um, to the housing stock and the requested use will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, as far as I know, this is the only accessory dwelling unit in that uh, particular area, but um, it would be only half of the number that would be allowed on a property uh, that has a two family house. So it certainly is not an excess. Um, and then returning to the accessory dwelling unit. So if a accessory dwelling unit is within six feet of the lot line, creation of an accessory dwelling unit is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the use of such an accessory building as a private garage or other allowed use. Um, so in keeping with the the uh, with the findings made previously, um, where there is really no outward appearance of change and where the, this uh, is being done in a a manner that preserves the appearance of the neighborhood. Uh, I think the board is able to find that uh, the creation of the accessory dwelling unit is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the use of such accessory building as a private garage. In fact, it may be uh, less detrimental. So um, those are the proposed findings. Are there any questions from the board in regards to any of those findings? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon? Uh, I'm perfectly willing to make all those findings, but I don't think they're all necessary. Okay. Uh, and I, I, the question has been really narrowed down, I think, to the same kind of more detrimental that we apply mm -hmm. when when we do extension of non-conforming uses. And and frankly, the any the idea that we may, with respect to these kinds of of projects say that if it it changes the appearance to the neighborhood or even worse if if somebody thinks there are too many ADUs there already then uh, even if it's not worse than the use as a garage nevertheless we would have the power to deny it I think it would be both false to what town meeting intended and and I hope that we never go that far uh, so I'm on the particular case I think that everything that the chair said was correct, uh, and we could go by individual factor by individual factor, but uh, it's neither here nor there because it doesn't matter. But I don't rely on all of the things that the chair said. I don't rely on the fact that there's no external change, for example, uh, and, and don't think that section 3.3.3 .3 ever can really uh, trump um, the specific provision in, in uh, V15. Um, so I'm Perfectly content to do that, um, but want to be clear that our role is extremely limited in these cases, mm -hmm. and uh, we we I don't want to have us interpret three point three point three in a way that takes the narrow standard established in uh, five one five and uh, and expands it out to include practically anything that has to do with uh, with special permits. With it. With apologies to Mr. Hanlon, I paraphrased the section out of uh, bullet five. Um, 
So the, the full text of what it says in bullet five, it says an accessory building, which accessory building shall not constitute a principal or main building by the incorporation of the accessory dwelling unit, provided if such accessory building is located within six feet of a lot line, then such accessory dwelling unit shall be allowed only if the Board of Appeals acting pursuant to section 3.3 .3, grants a special permit upon its finding that the creation of such an accessory dwelling unit is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the use of such accessory building as a private garage or other allowed use. Um, so I think by by paraphrasing, I, I left out the the part that we it does specifically reference section three point three and granting a special permit. So I, I do think we are required to go through those. Well, I we will leave that aside to us. If we get to a situation where somebody is telling us that uh, we should be denying an application because we already have too many ADUs, uh, mm -hmm. we can we can lock horns on that one. This is not a case that raises that question. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Hannon. Um, so unless there's other questions in regards to the findings, uh, there are three standard conditions that the board would apply to an application such as this that have been read prior into the, into the record, so I will not uh, read them again at the moment. Um, I was going to propose an additional condition that the inspector of buildings is to confirm the size of the existing units to confirm the application meets the requirements of section 510 to B1 bullet one, which is the 50% uh, requirement. Are there any additional um, conditions which any member of the board would want to attach? Seeing none, um, so this is a special permit under 5102B1 uh, that we have reviewed the findings and in particular the required finding under that section. And we have recommended uh, four conditions, the three standard plus the one additional. Are there any additional questions from the board in regards to this application? Being not, I would then ask Mr. Hanlon or if he or his designee would be willing to write, uh, to draft a written decision of in favor of approval. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to, happy to do that. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, so with that, um, as chair, I move to close the public hearing for Docket 3818-37 Fountain Road. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hamill. The vote of the board to close, Mr. DuPont. Yes. Mr. Hanlon? Yes. Uh, Mr. Riccadelli? Yes. Ms. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. And the chair votes yes. We are closed on 37 Fountain Road. Thank you very much. Appreciate your patience staying on till the end. Uh, we thank you very much for the board's approval of Mr. Um, Johnson's project. I know it'll be a great addition to the town. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Leone. Bye-bye. Then um, that is the last item. Uh, nope. So now, now we return to our administrative items on our agenda. And uh, the intent was that this evening we would uh, continue our discussion of revisions to the online application, which would be a, a great thing to do if we had such things, but unfortunately have not really had a chance to go through and work on that. Um, Mr. Okay. Hanlon and I have spent some time going through the rules and regulations and have been making some progress there. Um, but I don't think we're at the point now where um, it's worth taking up the board's time discussing either revisions to the application or the rules and regs. Do you agree, Mr. Hanlon? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so I would like to table keep those remaining tabled until October 8. Um, and then we have uh, our next meeting. So our next meeting is uh, September 24th. Um, we do have uh, two hearings that are already scheduled for that. One is um, a matter which is a... Um, an appeal of a decision of the building inspector. Uh, so 
make sure you take a take a good look at that one. Um, and then we also have a continued hearing from this evening, which will be added onto that. And we will also um, have the approval of the minutes uh, from July and August. So if you haven't had an opportunity to review those yet, please make sure to do so. Um, so we can vote on those on the 24th. Anything further from the board? If not, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I would especially like to thank Colleen Ralston for her assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record at the proceedings. It is our understanding the recordings made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. DuPont. The roll call vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Yes. Mr. Hanlon. Yes. Mr. Rigadelli. Yes. Ms. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. LeBlanc. Yes. And the chair votes yes. The board is adjourned. Thank you all so very much for being here tonight. Good to see you all. I'll see you in two weeks. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hi, Colleen. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.